So here's the deal. Okay. We're doing everything with bubble mailers now instead of regular envelopes, which are more okay. expensive but more protective. Right, but, but they have to go on tight cardboard to double protect them. Is that pizza box? Actually, these are Qualitex. Oh, okay. Are pizza. okay. <laughs> so far, everything's Qualitex or pizza. Yeah, okay, so okay. we'll throw these in here. What's this? Tape three sides. Ah. Customs man. declaration. Everything you mail overseas, they have to stamp three times, put different labels on them. It's. Yep, everything has to be handwritten, and they told me it has to be in your handwriting for some reason. Okay. I don't know how My that handwriting? Works. That's what they said. I mean, it's don't know. You're at the post office. What? I don't, a p a p a p I don't make these things up. Okay. I'm not <laughs> believing it quite, but I'll stick these in here, though. Federal offense otherwise. Whoops. So uh, we just have about 100 more of these to go, so okay. keep going. No, oh, don't forget the handwritten note on every, every Did single one. Did you put a handwritten note on that one? Um, not that one. Oh, well, oh. Uh, And they said the handwritten note has to be in your handwriting. In my handwriting. <laughs> Once again, I don't know why the post office is uh, micromanaging. But, you know, is this all the discs we have left? That will be it. Wow. Rise above three twists, balloon dogs, no bad clouds, and cheap wigs here. Raise the bar, prove our op form. It's the Balloon Blast video show with Scott Tripp and Sam Crummy. Hi folks, welcome back to Balloon Blast. This is episode 36. He's Scott Tripp. He's Sam Crummy. And this is the Little Purple Pig. Happy New Year. All right, Happy New Year to you guys. <laughs> we got a lot of great stuff coming up this episode. We got an instructional video from Matt Falloon. Matt Falloon? Matt Falloon. He's the guy that did the instructional uh, PDF that we reviewed just last just, week, yeah. week before. Yeah, absolutely. So if you haven't bought that yet, shame on you. But if you haven't, this is sort of a preview. You see the quality of stuff he does right. and uh, good stuff. I love his set. Oh, you guys yeah, will see yeah, that absolutely. later. Absolutely, yeah. So enjoy this video. Buy his other ones. But um, let's get on to this week. It's a new right. year. It is a new year. New stuff. New, new, um, new stuff. What's new with you this week? What's new with me? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Um, you guys might remember Devin from uh, episode 31, I believe it was, where we did the photo montage of some of the stuff I put him in. Well, I've been threatening him for <laughs> months to make a prom dress and make him wear it. Some of you might have seen this on Balloon Twister Central. Um, I did post it up there, but here... Let me ask you first. Yes. When you tell him this, how does he respond? <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks straight at me and says, Sir, there is nothing good about you. <laughs> but he keeps doing it because, one, he enjoys the attention. Two, the subway girl down the way, the, the night shift manager at Subway, does give him a lot of attention for his balloons. And... Um, he likes having his picture taken wearing all these crazy balloons. It also helps draw people into the restaurant. We've turned it into a grand marketing tool for the restaurant. But finally, here's the picture right now of Devin wearing the prom dress with the implants. <laughs> and, and he's doing his cute little toddlers and tiaras pose. <laughs> He's Devin Boo Boo. <laughs> He's Devin Boo Boo. <laughs> Sometimes my job is just hilarious. <laughs> right. You know, and astute viewers will learn that you can turn anything into marketing. So yeah, yeah. watch this guy and see what he does. Wow. Now I wish I'd gone first. I, don't, I can't follow that you up. can't follow but, um, that up? Well. You with me this week, actually, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you were with me when I subscribed to balloonclick.com. Mm -hmm. That is Ken Stillman's um, monthly pay website. It's $10 a month subscription, right. and you learn right away. You know, he puts the uh, balloon beads on there. Yeah, and yeah. And that's what sold us was the balloon yeah, beads. Yeah, yeah. But also, Ken Stillman, um, throughout history, his name is always popping up because he's always doing amazing stuff. He did the superheroes. Um, he's always doing cutting-edge stuff. Right. He's a mad scientist. Yes. I mean, if if someone did one thing that he did, you'd be a hero. Yeah. You know, the superheroes, the hitchhiking hats. His uh, work with the cartoon balloon, he did the cartoon balloon. The princesses. The princesses. Oh my gosh, the you princesses, know. yeah. That's why he did T-Jam on the road so many times. Yeah. And, but anyway, balloonclick.com, uh, good stuff up there, $10 a month. You can find that at balloonclick.com. Balloon yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's enough talking for me. I wonder what uh, Matt Flynn has for us. I don't know, let's take a look and see. <laughs> 
Hello Balloon Blast viewers, I'm Matt Falloon, lovely to meet you all. Uh, I'm going to show you my very cute little froggy today, uh, using a Geo, lime green, a 160 inflated with about maybe six fingers remaining, and a yellow five inch round under inflated, little round one. Uh, now this is a funky cool technique, basically you want to inflate your Geo, but you want to under inflate it, so So you've got that where all the pedals are actually quite, quite uh, distinct and pronounced and sticking out. You want to shrink that down so it's kind of, not quite round, but soft like that. And tie it up and you want to tie it sort of midway down the neck. Not too close to the balloon, not too close to the nozzle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a frumple twist which is nowhere near as difficult as it sounds. Basically, you're going to grab this nozzle here, and you're going to push this through, and we're going to line it up with... There's a dark spot where the difference between the pedals is. You're going to line it up with just beyond the dark spot. So you've got the dark spot just there, the dark line where the uh, rubber's a little bit thicker, where one pedal goes into another pedal. You want to go about a centimetre, half an inch, for all of you... Uh, Americans watching. Hello Americans. Um, yeah, so you want to frumple twist that in and grab it just past that point. So that goes right in and you grab the knot and pull your finger out and give that a couple of twists. And you end up with this really cool sort of frumple distortion which we are going to tie off with a scrap of balloon. I use my mouth because so far I haven't been able to grow a third hand, so until that happens I'll be using my mouth. Cut that off so you've got just a little bit of scrap holding your frumple in place. So it's going to look like that. Now, we're going to split our 5 inch round in half as neatly as we can. What I do to try to stop air from moving from one bubble to another is grab that nozzle and tie that around. I did that a couple of times. That just helps secure it in place. I don't have to be so careful about holding it now. And uh, it generally stops the air moving from one to the other. And then we're going to tie this using that scrap that we tied off our frontal twist with. We're going to tie those in nice and tight. And we're going to trim off all of our extra nozzles. So one nozzle, two tail, three nozzle, all trimmed off. So we've got this. So far so good, cute little frog. Oh, he's so cute. Up close, just like this. Now, our 160, which has fallen on the ground. Now, this is going to pass through the middle hole of the geo and pull through so it's about halfway it's just going to wrap around his belly and sit about halfway around the froggy's belly and then we're going to bring the other side down measure to the same point and create one small let's say a half inch pinch twist and we're going to tie the nozzle onto that pinch twist so we've got a little loop where his arms are going to come down uh, we're going to make his front legs. You can go as fancy or as simple as you want. I basically just do six bubbles at this stage. Little one inch, uh, half inch bubbles. So I'm trying to think in, uh, in Imperial, we use metric in Australia. So you want six, a little string of six, two centimetre half inch bubbles, let's say. And lock those back into that pinch twist. Position the pinch twist at the back and then split that bubble chain in half so we've got three bubbles and three bubbles hopefully you can see that we've got one little foot and another little foot made up of three bubbles each with a pinch twist at the back holding all in place squeeze as much air into the remainder of the 160 as you can and tie that tail back up into those feet so we've got a great big loop at the back and then we're going to find the midpoint of that loop and split that down, thus creating the back legs, which are just positioned behind the front legs like that. 
just like so. Isn't he cute? Here. Just like that. A little bit of rain. Make sure it's all sitting nice and tight. So we've got his hind legs sitting back from his body just like that. Next we just a little bit of artwork. I always find artwork really important. So many balloon artists rush the artwork and ruin what would otherwise be a really good sculpture. So really simply, two big dots for the pupils, like this. A couple of little nostrils, just little sort of half U shapes, just like that. And always, final details, always, we're going to use my white marker to do one large dot and one small dot. You want the large dot to be just at the border of where the black meets the yellow, and you want the small dot to be right there in the middle. There you have it. Cute little weird little geo distortion frog with a very cute little expression. Play around with this distortion. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with using this this funky little uh, mouth tuck kind of thing that you can get by frumple twisting a geo. So there we go. There you have it. Thanks guys. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Bye. Great job, Matt. Awesome. I love, love that set. frog. I do. I love his set. Oh right. my gosh. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> awesome. Um, well, now it's uh, time for our second installment of Ask the Latexperts. Wow, we have real segments. It's like a real I show. I know, I know. It's almost like a video magazine. It's like we're uh, 36 episodes in. Yeah, I but, know. Uh, all right, we have a lot of questions. We do, and, we do. Uh, I threw it out to Facebook right before we recorded. Yeah. We might do that from now on. I yeah, know. I think that works great. Um, yeah. We have some from our comments. We have some from Facebook. So many questions. We picked the one we like best. Well, no, we shouldn't say that. We didn't pick the one we, we, we picked best. the one that would be... I think the most interesting for us to talk about at this point. Easy um, to answer. The one we knew the answer to. That's what we did. I don't even know if it's that. It's 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 a. Uh, we picked a question. We picked a question. <laughs> we pulled it at random out of a hat. Hey, uh, no, why are uh, these episodes twenty minutes long? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The question came in from William Beatty, Doctor Twiston. Doctor Twiston. And uh, you're the radio guy. All I'll right. You answer this. Doctor Twiston asked, "Who has influenced you the most in your balloon artistry?" He gave four examples. He did give four examples. He said uh, some of his influencers are Jimmy Davis, Roger Siegel, Scott Davis, and Ralph Dewey. Wow, those are the people that like built Balloon Twisted. Right, so right, right. I yeah. guess by default, they're everybody. So yeah, even if yeah. you don't know who they are. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they built the foundation on which we all build our house now. So. I was trying to pick which one is most influential on in going to the one balloon animal. The three twist dog, which is our basic building block. And mm -hmm. I think they really all kind of had a hand yeah, in that, right? Kinda, so. yeah, yeah. All right. Let's have you go first. Okay. So I don't have to hear my voice right now. All right. Well, <laughs> I've got a, got a few influences, balloon-wise. Um, I have several influences, non-balloon-wise. Balloon-wise, I, I, you know, I always look up to people like Buster Balloon, but everybody does. Um, Ken Stillman, as we mentioned in, in the opening segment, is is really just a, a pioneer in, in the art, and, and his work with just everything he's done so far has just been so great and such a great building block because I like the guys who teach a concept versus, you know, just teaching how to do a particular set of sculptures. That way you can build on that concept and you can take that work and, and put it into other things. Um, you know, I, I, I learned stuff through, uh, uh, through Scott. Scott here, um, <laughs> yeah. through his work on Balloon HQ. Through my work with the Purple Pig. Yeah, with the Purple Pig. No, actually, Scott's writings on Balloon HQ, it shocked him that I had read every word ever posted on Balloon wow. HQ in the monthly columns by everybody, um, and that I really enjoyed his work. Um, and those are still up there for our viewers. They are, they are. Um, I also take a lot of inspiration from outside the balloon world of, of course, different mediums of art, you know, because I, I like to draw, I like to paint. Um wow. I also take, if you guys saw the video of the robotic balloon, I take influence from my work as a hobby with radio controlled stuff and just my general tinkering and engineering. Um, I take a, a lot of influence from just the world around me, uh, movies from from the, the work of the special effects guys. Uh, I take uh, some inspiration, especially whenever it comes to building like a balloon motorcycle from my hobby of building motorcycles in real life. Uh, the current bike I ride now, I built from basically the ground up. Um, 
I mean, that, that, that covers a lot of my influences. What about you, Scott? Right. And that's a good point. If all your influences with making balloons are balloon people, then there's sort of a, a limit and a roof on what you can do. Yeah. So it's good to have outside balloon artist influences. Yeah. That being said, these are my balloon artist influences. Now, I made a list of five, and um, I couldn't decide whether uh, Don Caldwell or Buster Balloon should be on the list. So I count them as one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, let's see. You cover him already. Uh, John Christensen. He's a guy that was around a few years ago all over the MBD2.com forums. He did, I think, one Balloon HQ column. Mm -hmm. Really great stuff. And he's a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. um, hobbyist, of course, doesn't mean that you're not good enough to be a professional balloon artist. It means he has a really great job that makes more money than he would be if he was a balloon artist. Which job. is Yeah, job. <sighs> Basically... And that'll bring me to the next one. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. But that means that whatever he does, he does for fun. And he's made really awesome big stuff. You guys know him from the uh, Crueler Flower, probably. Oh, yeah. Okay, that guy. Um, also very cerebral, the way he approaches balloons. And on the same um, idea, Jack Matson. Also a hobbyist because he has a very successful company in the real world, mm -hmm. meaning that when he plays with balloons, he can play with balloons and the creativity. Jack Matson, uh, he he has made sculptures that he has like shut the door on Simpsons. You know, you see the work he's done on all the Simpsons, and you can't improve on it. Yeah. Done. He has killed <laughs> so many sculptures. Um, his work with the uh, the one ballooners. I do a lot of Jack Matson stuff. Much worse than he does. <laughs> you know, it's like you can't touch his stuff. Um, two more quick ones: Bonnie Davis, Bonnie the Balloon Lady. Um, you don't see her on Balloon HQ as much anymore, but the work she has done, she's put out a few CD-ROMs, is amazing. And I've seen the way her mind works, like developing a. Actually, in the chat rooms, oh, if we used to be up at midnight, and you would see someone. Here's a design I'm working on. You know, two hours later, I made these improvements. You know, an hour later, and now it's this. So I like to see the evolution. Yeah. I'm talking a lot. All no, right. no, you're fine. Number you're five, Janine Von Essen. She's put out a bunch of CD-ROMs, and just from those CD-ROMs, if those are the only balloons you know how to make, you can easily have a very successful career. She has made, she's made the cutest stuff. She has made, she made balloon excrement with eyes. And you look at it, and you're like, that's so cute. And that's so wrong. <laughs> but, you know, such is the power of Janine. She has that Midas touch. She touches something, and it's amazing. All right, I have five non-balloon ones, too. Clock wipe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I talked a lot, and I have to do five more. Because we said yeah. we're going to talk about non-balloon, because as I said, if all your heroes are balloon artists, then, you know, you can only aspire to what they've done before. Outside of the balloon world, we have many influences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, and I say this guy's name all the time, if you've seen me um, on any of the workshop tours I've done or anywhere, Nathan Sawaya. He's like the guy for Lego art. Mm -hmm. He's their balloon, uh, Buster Balloon, Don Caldwell, um, the guy who makes the biggest stuff, the best stuff that everyone goes to. Um, and I don't know if we're going to go through the trouble of trying to put pictures. They're probably copyrighted. Nathan probably. Sawaya, you're going to find him on yeah. the internet. Next up is Leica. That's the company that put out um, Paranorman that's in theaters now, or it's on DVD right now. Yeah, it's on DVD now. They did Coraline. They've done a lot of really good stop-motion animation stuff. And I seriously want to do an hour episode just talking about how much I like them, because if you watch the uh, the movie, you're like, yay, it's a pretty good movie. If you watch the behind the scenes, you see that every frame of everything from the whole movie is handmade. Yeah. Um, the people have hair that has like wire inside so they can move little hairs if they're surprised. Um, the lamp on the table in the background scene was made painstakingly by hand, yeah. wired, and uh, it's amazing the stuff they do. So they build worlds, and that's like a big scale of what we're trying to do. We're trying to build little things, so yeah. that's a good influence. Um, all right, next one's a weird one. Uh, public supermarket. <laughs> in my uh, twist and shout... Um, uh, profile it says actually I think it's mispronounced it's supposed to be supermarket displays the Publix here in Hermitage mm -hmm. there was a manager who'd make these huge displays out of uh, soda cartons okay the, uh, like the uh, soda the 12 pack yeah 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 refrigerator things he'd like build big massive stuff and I'll show you some I have them on my phone okay 
I actually want to take the cameras and walk through some of them. They have a large, I don't know how big it would be, like 20 by 20 display area where he would build something, you know, every season. For the Super Bowl, he'd build, like, these arenas, people made out of cartons. Nice. He's the manager. He doesn't do this. It's just something he does on on, on his own. own. Yeah, wow. But um, he moved to Alabama, and now he does it there. There's a really small of fireplace thing that someone else made, you know, trying to mimic what he did, mm-hmm. but his stuff was on such a grand scale. I have pictures, I don't know if we could put them on, on here or not, of uh, a camping scene he did. He did a tent, a stream, all this really cool stuff made off of soda cartons. A camper, <laughs> full-size camper. Wow. Anyway, yeah, soda displays. Um, Number four, a guy named Aaron Comet Bus. Back in high school, he was my favorite author, musician, and artist all at the same time because the stuff he did was so amazing. Yeah, his medium for artwork was photocopiers. <laughs> he would take pictures like from the newspaper, photocopy it, take it from this copier, put it in that one. He knows that this one has a scratched drum head, so you get this from it, enlarge it on that one because every different copier had a different so something, yeah, right, wow, attitude okay. and personality. So after running something through 200 times, he'd have a finished product. Wow. Just a, a weird way of looking at things, a different way. Um, everything he did was different. Um, Number five, Jack Davis from Mad Magazine. <laughs> from Tales from the Crypt, from the 50s and still doing art. Yeah. Over 60 years of art. One of the most detailed artists and quickest working. It's like, you just imagine him with an ink pen, just slash, 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 work of art. Wow. And I just love the stuff he does. But that's five, and yeah. oh, once again, on and, on and on and on and on. I've got a couple more that I could add <laughs> to the mix. I would be remiss if I didn't add them. In fact, um, you know, one of my earliest influences, of course, I, I did what a lot of people do. I bought the Tricky Joe Leffler DVDs um, because all I had had up to that point was the poorly written instructions in the little kit from Walmart that I started with. Um I have my high school art teacher, uh, Austin Dent from Illinois, that was a great influence on my life and on my work, uh, you know, uh, developing my own style, my own persona with art of all medium. And, of course, I do have, for my performance influence, um, my old high school speech teacher, uh, Carla Winters. She was, uh, uh, she got me from throwing up and passing out on the first day of speech class, giving my first speech to where now I don't have any problem at all standing in front of a crowd of people and and doing what it is I do and you know I those those two people right there have just been great personal influences on me not just in in my balloon art and in my professional life but in my personal life as well and it's uh, those those kind of influences you really can't quantify so much as you know what what they've influenced you because it's just been so much right I'm sorry about the distraction there that that's, hopefully that's, people off camera don't see. Yeah, that nobody saw that. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, you know, and while I'm telling this list, I keep coming up with more ideas, so I probably shouldn't throw out more. Vampira, Ed Wood, <laughs> Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looney Tunes. Blues Clues. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you already said George Lucas, right? <laughs> yeah. Well. Everything on the internet that you text at six in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> George Romero. George Ooh. Romero. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> that brings us to the end of another episode of Balloon Blast. Uh, what? So soon? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we have as much fun making this. Hopefully, you have as much fun watching it as we have making this. Uh, we do enjoy this. Um, all right, I think we've said enough. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. January. Don't forget right. twist and shout. Uh, come by and see us, and we'll autograph your uh, competition. Pieces. Twist and shout. Yeah. End of January. <laughs> <laughs> enough said. Okay, enough said. Okay. And uh, where's the 12 DVD project at, Scott? Sold out. Hopefully, by the time you see that, well, probably no, not. Probably not. Um, Almost sold out, Find though. us on Facebook. Yeah. Blown Blast have, Video Show. We have, what, about 50 copies left? About that. Yeah. So uh, if you don't have it yet, get it. You can find it pretty easily on the Balloon Blast Video Show Facebook page. And uh, get that ordered, man. Right. Uh, Till next (laughs) week, he's Scott Tripp. He's Sam Cremains. Little Purple Pig. And there's a cat right back here behind us. (laughs) Y'all have a great week. Bye. Bye. You and I in a
toy shop, buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got. Set them free at the break of dawn. So one by one, they were gone. Back at the base, sparks in the software. Flash the message, someone's out there. Floating in the summer sky. 99 red balloons go by. 99 red balloons. Yeah, right.